Morning YouTube, this is Chuck Jennings with CNS Mining and Manufacturing in Arizona again. I'm doing a custom project today and a customer requested that it be uh, heat painted. So I'm going to show a short video on that. And uh, the piece is in my magnetic vise here. And I'm going to zoom in on it because there's something a little different that you have to do when you, you heat paint. And what I've done here is uh, polish this with a 120 grit instead of the uh, normal 40 grit that I use. So you can see it's got a higher uh, degree of reflectancy on it uh, to make the colors when I heat paint come out. So I'm going to kill this and, and hang it and uh, uh, we'll start from there. Thanks. Alright guys, uh, I'm back. Uh, getting ready to start heat painting on this. So when you heat paint on steel I'm using a propane torch. Some guys use uh, acetylene. Uh, that's a little too fast for me. I, I don't want that kind of speed uh, with the torch. You have to move too quick because the, the steel will change colors as the more heat that it's applied to it. And it will change from a, a beautiful gold, uh, they call it uh, wheat, to a brown, to a, a, a purple, and then it will end up going back to gray. So you start uh, heat painting at the bottom, wherever, because your heat's going to rise. And it's just constant movement. You cannot keep, uh, keep the torch in one spot for very long because when it changes, it keeps going uh, after you pull the torch away. So when it starts to change and you see that color change, uh, it's too late. You know, the, the torch is, as you can see, this has changed to brown down here with a little bit of purple on the feet, and that's kind of what I was going for. And you just got to keep moving all the time. You got to keep moving. So I think we'll just keep this that color right there. And we'll start in on this quail. It's a designer quail that we that she requested. Trying to get this foot here with a little bit more purple in it. See now, this changed. It kept changing. So now we'll start on him, and we'll just free heat them all over. And sometimes when it's really humid and you're doing this with a torch, you'll see that uh, the moisture will come out of the steel. And I not, could never believe that there was that much moisture in steel, but in the winter time you can actually chase that moisture with the torch. The secret is just to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And if you see it changing too much on you in a certain spot, go to a different spot on the steel. But keep moving the torch. And it'll just give you beautiful color in this, in the metal. probably see the shine in the, the one foot on the quail in the, the blue. I mean the blue is just really nice. So when this is done then we'll, uh, we'll clear coat it uh, in, with powder. And even at 400 degrees the, uh, the colors are not affected. See now I just it started changing on me too quick up there so I moved back down to on this other spot so that I didn't go too much. Now this one's going so I'll go up here where there's no color. Work a little bit there and then maybe go up on this top knot here, a little bit there, go back into here, back down, and just keep moving. Keep the torch moving. You, you, you stay in one spot too long it'll turn back to the same color the steel was when you started. And you're being an artist here, so there's no two will be the same. And uh, you can do it the way you like. I really enjoy doing this. It's uh, real time intensive though. A piece like this will take 20-30 minutes. 
uh, where normally I can powder coat, you know, in 15 and I'm done. But then I get to powder coat this afterwards. So if you're going to do this kind of thing, take into consideration your time and how long you're spending on it uh, and, and get paid for it. Yeah, I'm not going to bore you with any more of this. I'm going to move off it for right now and I'll come back on with it. Okay, I'm back. Uh, you can see now where the color, especially on the letters, has, has taken shape. I'm almost complete with it. I've got this little windmill thing to do yet. And I'll leave this on for a little bit and uh, let you see how that goes. But uh, something to remember is when you have the torch on the steel, in which I'm about a oh, uh, inch, inch and a half away, that this keeps changing color after you pull the torch. So even though you get the color you want, you've got to pull the torch before it gets there. Just like that just changed right there. Uh, it, it just, it's just a technique you have to learn. It's, it's strictly a timing thing. And you don't want to uh, stay on any spot too long. That's the big secret to this. And then when we're done, we will clear coat it with, uh, well, I, I'm a powder coater, so I'll powder coat it. And uh, then it'll be protected forever because the powder I use is UV protected and then they can put it outside or wherever the heck they want to put it. But it's, uh, now let's see, I'm about 15 minutes into this piece now and it, it's not a real big piece, but it's, uh, I'm almost there, so I'll probably have a 20 minutes on this piece. Remember to take that into consideration if you're going to charge for this. I, I, I charge differently for this than I do for anything else. Although it's still powder coated, so that you have to pay for the powder and for uh, uh, the labor to do this. I mean, this is this is quite involved, and, and it goes uh, fairly slowly because you just can't rush it. It's, and I hope you can see this how this is changing color here. But you've got to keep moving, keep that torch moving. And you want to make a quick change, you can hold it for just a second and move on. Make it just a little bit and move and you can just see how that changed right away. And don't try to paint like you're, you have a paintbrush because it won't work. You know, yeah, unless your timing is just really, really good. Really. I can't imagine you getting the results you want by uh, trying to paint like a paintbrush. You, you got to remember this is hot and it changes. And it keeps changing. And sometimes that causes you grief. And the good thing, I guess, is that although you make a mistake somewhere on this, you can grind it off because this is just surface color. It's not anything that's uh, really hard to get off. So I'm going to back away from this again so I don't bore the daylights out of you. I'll be back when it's done. Okay, now we're done. Uh, well, with the heat part of it, we'll let this cool before we powder coat. But uh, I'll show you on this windmill. I hope this will show. You can see the one blade right next to the, the top of the windmill on the one corner is almost a silver. And that's where the heat from the other side got that, that blade and, and made it go. And that's the whole thing can go that color. So just be careful. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, share, or subscribe, or all three. Thanks uh, for watching. I'm gone. Okay, this uh, is something I wanted to show you before I put this in the oven. This is a piece I just heat colored. And that is a clear coat powder on it. All the clear coats come out as, as white. And then when they're in the oven and flow out, uh, they turn clear and harden and it looks like glass. So I'll be back and bring it, when I bring it out and show you. Okay, here it is. A finished product. Just out of the oven. Came out really good. I'll uh, zoom in down here and see if I can give you a good view of this. It's, uh, this clear powder obviously changed from the white. <coughs> to a clear base and that'll protect the uh, the colors <clears throat> the golds and the blues and the purples and throughout the whole thing 
And that's it. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up or share or just hit the subscribe button if you want to see ones in the future. Thanks for watching. I'm gone.